Hello class and welcome to our presentation introduction to the ethics of cloning. So in terms of our topics we will be discussing what is cloning, three types of cloning, the controversy of cloning, and then we will take a look at some secular ethical questions and some theological ethical questions that we'd like for us to consider this week. So what is cloning? Cloning is the activity of creating a copy of some biological entity, such as a gene, a cell, or an entire organism. And put simply, a clone is more or less an exact copy of an already existing biological entity. So how does cloning work? Well, you are going to learn all about this in the dog cloning video on iLearn, which you have to watch for your homework assignment. And I guarantee you it is a good video, uh, quite illuminating. Now, cloning, or this process of copying biological entities, is morally controversial. But some types of cloning are more controversial than others. So what are the types of cloning procedures that exist in the scientific community and which ones are more controversial than others? So there are three general types of cloning, molecular, therapeutic, and reproductive. So molecular cloning refers to the copying of DNA fragments for research in other words, it is cloning done at the molecular level. Now here's the deal. I am not a microbiologist of any kind, and this process is beyond my expertise. But just know that for the sake of this class, molecular cloning is really not controversial at all. And because this is a course on morality or ethics, um, there's really no reason for us to talk about it. So this is more or less an FYI slide. Now, the second type of cloning is called therapeutic cloning, and this refers to the use of cloned human or animal embryos to treat medical afflictions like diseases, physical or psychological injuries or abnormalities. And an example of therapeutic cloning is stem cell harvesting. So in the case of stem cell harvesting, human cells, usually skin cells, are cloned inside of a human ovum, or egg, which results in the production of super pluperfect stem cells that are capable of repairing tissue and organs. So for example, if I have a damaged liver, all right, and I'm kind of dying from uh, this condition, these super pluperfect stem cells can be used to repair my liver cells and henceforth potentially save my life. Now, this is an oversimplified description of how stem cells work and are harvested, but just know this. Therapeutic cloning methods, such as stem cell harvesting, are considered morally controversial. And that's really all that we're gonna say about it. Now, the third type of cloning is reproductive cloning. And this is the process of producing a genetic copy of a living being, whether human or animal. So in other words, I would be what is called the cloned parent. And if I wanted to clone myself, then I would be producing basically or making a genetic copy of myself, which would be an exact genetic replica of who I am. Now this process of copying a living being is the most controversial form of cloning. Okay, why? Well, reproductive cloning is controversial because of the A, the process of cloning, and B, what we might call the product of cloning. So in terms of the process of cloning, 
Some argue that the procedure of cloning itself is morally wrong because one, cloning violates the laws of nature. It could be considered playing God and it is potentially harmful to beings and biological entities involved in the process itself. In other words, the process of reproductive cloning requires a surrogate mother, an egg donor, and a cloned embryo. So many argue that these different parties that are involved are physically harmed and even potentially emotionally and existentially harmed by the process of cloning. And again, you'll learn more about this when we go over our dog cloning uh, video. Now, in terms of the product of cloning, ethicists are concerned about the moral status of the cloned being. So a few questions that arise are, how will the clone being by, be viewed by society? That is, will they be viewed as equal to naturally born human beings? How will the clone being view him or herself? Will the clone being be granted personhood and freedom in society? Or will the clone be expected to be like the clone parent or the person who was copied? Now, this is a little bit repetitive because we talked about this in the first or the last two slides. But just so we have just kind of a clear understanding of some of the major questions that are that arise from this. Um, Let's take a look at some secular ethical questions, then we'll look at some theological ethical questions. So as far as secular ethical questions, here are a few. Is there any benefit to cloning research? That is, some argue that there are indeed benefits to cloning. If so, do the benefits outweigh any possible moral consequences, or do the consequences outweigh the benefits? Two, does the process of cloning violate the laws of nature? If so, is violating natural law inherently wrong? I mean, some could argue that human beings violate natural law all the time. So what is it about cloning that makes it even more egregious than other things that human beings do? Three, if human beings are to be successfully cloned, how would society view the cloned beings? Would they be granted the same rights as human beings born by natural reproduction? Or would they be regarded as like second-class citizens? And how would the clone view himself or herself? I mean, here they are, a genetic copy of either an existing or deceased being. Would they see themselves as unique or would they see themselves as just a genetic copy? And because of this, would they be, would they experience unique forms of existential suffering? Would they see themselves as individuals or would they see themselves as a being expected to be like the parent clone? So again, just a few questions to think about. And some theological ethical questions for us to consider. One, and, and the first two questions are actually more in line with the um, Judeo-Christian tradition. Does the human engagement in cloning overstep the command to have dominion over creation? That is, remember from Genesis 1, human beings are given dominion over the natural world. Um, is cloning considered an overstepping um, that responsibility of dominion? Or is cloning actually consistent with this command for dominion? That is, does it actually give human beings permission to engage in cloning? Two, what is the spiritual status of clones? Do they have a unique soul? Do they share the same soul as the clone parent? And do they have a unique destiny in the eyes of God? Now for uh, questions three and four, these are more um, Buddhist in nature and are cited by Damien Kiaun in his chapter uh, eight of his book. Would clones share the same karma as the parent clone? If so, would this be harmful to the clone in the quest for nirvana? So for example, if I am a clone of a murderer, I obviously have a lot of bad karma. Will I inherit the bad karma of that murderer? Or will I be starting from scratch? If I inherit it, then of course it means that 
cloning is morally irresponsible because it is actually harming people. And can you clone a Buddha? In other words, is the achievement of enlightenment influenced by genetics or is it earned by merit or both? So if we were to find a bone fragment from the historical Buddha, could we clone him? If so, is this a, the morally right thing to do? It might be a good thing because maybe the world needs to have a clone Buddha to help uh, in this world. Uh, or, again, is it subjecting this Buddha to a destiny that it really shouldn't have? So again, just some theological ethical questions for us to consider this week.